So let's get started. Let's do it. This is our last webinar of the week. All right. So Monday, for those of you guys that are new, it's Monday through Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern. Okay. That time might change by an hour depending on daylight savings. To be completely honest, I have, I am, I'm always so confused by daylight savings. The reason why is because I'm from Arizona. Arizona is one of the few states that does not do daylight savings. They don't change. We'd never change our clocks in Arizona. So the whole concept of this time shift is always so confusing to me. All right. But let's jump into things. Big thing to talk about guys is NFP in the morning. Okay. Or I forgot, I'm not going to be referring to times because for me it's tonight, right? You guys see on this calendar, it's at seven 30 where I am in Thailand right now. Or I mean, well, it's nine in the morning, but it's gonna be seven 30 at night when it comes out. Um, for most of you guys, it's going to be early morning if you're in the U S and in the Western part of the world. Um, other than that, just we know that upcoming we have NFP, okay? Always make sure, I know I, I say this a lot, guys, but just make sure your, your time on your um, calendar is set to the right time, okay? Make sure you have the right time zone. Um, oh, hold on, guys. We're just going to spotlight my video or pin my video real quick. Don't want to have a bunch of videos up there. Um, so, yeah, NFP is in the morning, guys. Uh, that's non-farm payrolls. It's uh, a measure of how many people were added to payroll companies in the U.S. over the, the, the course of the last month, so for the month of October, excluding the farming industry. That's why it's called the non-farm employment change, or NFP, okay? Um, at the same time, we're also going to see unemployment rates released for uh, the U.S. as well as the average hourly earnings. We're going to see what uh, the numbers come in at. It looks like uh, NFP numbers are coming at around 200K. Unemployment rate is supposed to stay the same at 3.7%, which we are at um, very, very low lows. We're at, like, we're at like at decade low lows. If you actually look at the unemployment rate chart and you go back, like this goes, I can keep clicking this and this goes back all the way to like 2007 and you'll see unemployment rates on this entire thing. Look at all these percentages, right? You don't see anything as low as um, what they are now. Right, we go back to August 2007, right, right at the start of the recession, and you know even then unemployment rates were still pretty high. So unemployment rates are at like really, um, you know, we could say like all not necessarily all time lows, but like multi year, multi decade lows. Okay, so 3.7 percent, and then average hourly earnings is going to be coming out. Um, uh, this is stuff guys also, I, you know, I'm not going to get super crazy into educating you guys on this because this is going to be in part with the videos. There's actually a whole fundamental section where I go and be going over literally like NFP, PPI, CPI, literally all these little things, PMI, you know, every GDP, all this good stuff. So if, if this stuff goes over your head, don't sweat on it guys. It is coming out for you. Um, but let's look at the charts. First and foremost, let's look at AUD USD. Okay, so I had a lot of people um, asking me why do we close the trade, and I'm just going to be completely honest with you guys. I like to be transparent, honest with you guys, and the reason is is because, um, well, I turn I've come to find out now. I, I find out that that's not the case. I went and looked at the the MyFX book and the history, but if you guys are familiar with the MyFX book and just the tracking of the the signals and the, the trade copier. Well, all of the signals that I give out are taken on the trade copier. So the trade copier is a direct reflection of the signals at a 2% risk or 1% risk, depending on how I give it out. And you guys know that we had a very, very strong beginning of this month. We were up, uh, depending on what you risked on your account, if you were connected to the trade copier, like about 5%. Um, actually a little bit more than 5% at one point. And then we had a couple losses, which brought us back down to about break even. And then we had this trade, which I wanted to put on the books for the month of uh, October as, you know, a nice um, close. So I did decide to choose, I did choose to close the trade early. That way I could book some profits and really just kind of lock things um, in. Um, unfortunately, I go and I go and look and when I go, when I close the trade in my history, it says 1031 on MetaTrader 4, but and when I go and look at the MyFX book, it's reporting for the month of November. So if you go look at the MyFX book, it's like up 2% or a little bit more than 2%, a little closer to 3% for the month already. So, or not, not closer to 3%, closer to 2%, like 2.1 or 2.2% for the month. So um, anyways, just, you know, moving, moving past that, uh, this trade is, is looking very nice. Um, and obviously, if you guys are in the signals channel, if you missed the, 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 the call to close it, you know, you should definitely have your, your, stop loss at break even. I am looking for a retest. I will look to re-enter on a pullback. So this pair, Euro USD and NZD USD and NZD JPY, all four of these pairs that we're going to look at in just a moment, I'm looking to re-enter on a retest. Uh, Corey saying I'm having issues with my audio. 
Um, it could be the Wi-Fi here, guys. Honestly, um, I'm only at this place for two weeks. It's just an Airbnb that I booked. Um, I have been able to, you know, or haven't been able to yet. I've been so busy, but I am going to go kind of look around and try to find like a, maybe a little bit nice. I mean, this place is, is nice, but um, maybe disconnect and reconnect. Uh, Corey, it, maybe try pressing the little icon. I mean, maybe if you can't hear me at all, you do have to unmute yourself looks prime for retest audio is loud and clear, but, um, I am going to be moving into a different like Airbnb or accommodations that I'm going to make sure has a little bit better Wi-Fi Cause I do notice it does say occasionally on my screen connection is unstable, but, uh, hopefully it's working for you guys. Um, anyways, so yeah, I'm looking for a, a, a possible retest. I'll look for a retest of this trend line and then we'll look to go long. So we're going to be looking for an entry on AUD USD a little bit lower. Do keep in mind there is NFP guys. So the dollar can get a little bit, a little volatile. Okay. So we're going to, you know, hope that everything goes in our favor. Hope that, uh, you know, we do get this retest, but we'll, we'll go with that. Um, Euro USD, same thing with Euro USD guys. Let me, let me just kind of backtrack a second and just look at the dollar index for a moment. We look at the daily on the dollar index. Um, I mentioned yesterday, I'd be expecting downside on the dollar. We really saw, I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit for you guys too. Um, I mentioned spe specifically on yesterday's webinar, guys, if you were there, I said I would be expecting something like this. I literally drew a line just like that. Um, and we're, we're actually seeing some very aggressive selling, right? We saw exactly what I was expecting, which was this high to be broken, where it traps a lot of buyers in the markets. A lot of buyers have buy stops just above the previous highs. So they assume, you know, in their, in their head, they say, they tell themselves, okay, well, if this, if this yearly high is broken, which this is the yearly high for the dollar index, then it's going to continue to rally. It's going to hit that buy stop and it's going to keep going. But that's just not the case, right? We have market makers that are the true drivers of the market and, you know, they can see all these orders and they don't want to like let everybody make money easily. So we're probably going to see the dollar continue to drop, which should give us some good um, opportunity to buy Euro USD. Okay. So just like we are looking to buy AUD USD. So um, with Euro USD looking for a pullback. Um, you know, I, I always like to see a pullback to like at least the 50% retracement level somewhere around there. So if we fit out this, just this tiny little swing from this move, if we can get down to this 50% retracement level, we'll look to take a buy with our stop loss just below the lows. And that's actually our new yearly lows by just a few pips. Okay. So we bounced. If you look at on the four hour or the daily or four hour on Euro USD, we have a really nice double bottom in this area, right? The daily candle just closed a couple hours ago and we've got a really, really nice bullish engulfing candle. And you know what? While I'm here, let's go ahead and change. I am no longer in LA. I am all the way <clears throat> in same time as Bangkok. <clears throat> so that way I can see everything good on my end. Okay. So Euro USD looking for some upside on Euro USD, but I'm not looking to just, just take a buy right now. Okay. Um, yeah, just not, not looking to take a buy right off the bat. But if you guys are also familiar with the big shadow, that is another um, trading technique, something that's all uh, taught in um, Naked Forex. Sorry, guys. I'm so, so, so tired. I've been up since midnight, but I am grinding, grinding, grinding. I'm going to push through this whole day and hopefully get some good sleep tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. Um, but uh, big shadow, nice. Uh, that's nice uh, confirmation of a reversal in this area, right? You know, we're obviously extremely oversold in on, on a lot of these pairs: Euro USD, AUD USD, NZB USD. Um, gold did exactly what I said it would do. You know, it dropped below this support structure. If we look at this on the four hour, it broke through. It originally broke through this support structure, which we expected, right? But then once we saw it go a little bit lower, I said we're definitely going to be breaking through this structure. And that's what we saw. We see price come down here, kind of grab that liquidity from all the sellers that enter the market. And now we see price moving up higher. All right. So our original target of gold going up to 1265, which if we backtrack to the daily for just a moment, and we see price moving up higher, um, clearly very, very strong, nice rejection off the EMA, you know, just really, really nice price action on, on gold, right? We've been capped by the 50 EMA for a couple months now, finally consolidated at these lows, made a little bit of a bottom, broke through the 50 EMA, consolidated above it, came back and retested it, and now rejecting off of it, right? Very, very clear bullish momentum going on right now. And, um, my target is going to be uh, 1265 and it's going to be the, un actually, it's probably gonna be a little bit higher than 1265 now. No, 1265. Yeah. 1265. Um, and that's, if I, if I put this on, I, I know I'm zooming out a little bit guys, but what I'm, what I want you guys to see is this trend line, right? So this, okay, hold on. Let me, let me remove a couple things real quick guys. Okay. 
Let's remove 1150. We'll keep 1200 because that's the nearest $50 target to the bottom. We'll keep 1250 because that's the nearest target to the top. Um, what's this 1239 thing right here? Let's see. This, uh, I mean, this just shows kind of where liquidity is, but we can delete that for right now because that was more of a principle to show you guys. Um, and then we'll go ahead. I mean, to really clean things up, right, I can remove this FIB level, right, but I'm not going to because I'll show you guys just a moment why I'm targeting this area, okay? 1265 is going to be hit, okay? Or I always, I always, I, I, I don't mean to sound like a market maker, right? I mean, I don't know for sure if it's going to get hit, but I, like, if I'm good at reading the markets, guys, which I feel like I am pretty good at reading the markets, 1265 should get hit, okay? Um, and we have the underside of this major, major, major trend line. We can actually even see previously a bounce and then a break in this area, and that should be our next level. That's also the 50% retracement level, right, of this swing high to swing low and our 50%. So lots of confluence in this area, and I'm just going to try one little thing, right? I just, I see something. I could be wrong. But it looks like we also have an extension level. No, not quite, actually. Sorry, no, I, I'm kind of talking to myself at this point, guys. But um, I was seeing if I could eyeball that. It's definitely more than the 161.8. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's not. Maybe. Oh, wow. That's why. I promise you. Like, that's not an act, guys. I promise you. Like, I did not do this before. Like, just to, just to try to make it seem like that. Like, that, that is wild. So um, from this move to the bottom that's going to be our extension 161.8 so that is our level guys right there that 161.8 extension the 50 percent retracement level in the underside of this trend line i mean so much confluence to that level i mean i get excited when i see that stuff guys that's the stuff is like you, us as a trader like that makes us excited now as far as getting into this trade you know getting getting an actual buy on gold um i will look for a buy on gold right because if we do see this downside on euro usd which i think we're probably going to see what's going to happen is, is a lot of people are chasing buys at this top right now, right? They all see this. They all see it going up. They see that bullish engulfing on the daily. Gold's volatile though, right? You know, the market makers aren't just going to let everybody make money easily. So we kind of have like this level of support and resistance. I think we could actually drop below this level, right? Trick a lot of buyers and maybe get down to like this EMA right here. If we get down to this level, um, we're going to be taking a buy. And you know what? Matter of fact, just so I know for sure, Let's go ahead and right click this and let's put an alert in here and boom, we have an alert. Why is it gray? Maybe that's just, okay, there we go. It turned red. Okay. It's freaking me out for a second. All right. So once price hits that level, I literally get a text right to my phone guys. And it says gold is crossing, you know, whatever crossing 1225.93. I run over to my computer, watch price, you know, watch that four hour candle, watch how that one hour candle closes and then boom, we take the entry. Okay. It's all about timing. Um, so that's gold, Euro USD, similar thing, um, retracement. I mean, if I'll do, I'll do it with the uh, Euro USD also guys, check it out. I'll put like it right here. Let's go ahead and just be meth methodical about this. Let's go ahead and put that there. Let's put it a little bit fit above the 50% retracement just so we can catch it for sure. And let's add an alert right there. All right. So boom, we have an alert, our alert on Euro USD. This is the beauty of trading view pro by the way, guys. Like, I mean, it's, if you're asking yourself, is it worth the nine 99 a month? Absolutely, freaking lootly. Right. Plus I hate ads. Like who really likes clicking on like the ad and having to like watch some BS or, you know, even just to click on it, you know, whatever. Uh, let's see. You got 18, even free. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Kevin free has alerts, but you can only put two alerts for free. So if you want to put like a bunch of alerts, you need, you need the pro. I'm not, I'm not trying to sell you guys on trading view. Just saying it, it is a good deal. If you guys want to do it also unlocks like a bunch of other tools and stuff that you can use. Um, USC Swiss Frank, no, not interested in USC Swiss Frank right now, but I did mention that if we pull back down to parity, we could see, um, some downside. So I, I do believe USD Swiss Frank is going to move down, but you know, this pair has really finessed us in the past. I'm not a huge fan of just like jumping right into it. And then my, and I, my, an affiliate, I'll, I'll send you my affiliate link, Kevin. No, just kidding. Um, both pound pairs, not interested in trading right now. Um, oh, just to kind of also recap with the pound, we did see them keep interest rates the same. At, this was yesterday that came out for the news for the pound interest rates, the same at 0.75% didn't really make the markets move too much. I mean, the spike that we see on both of these pairs has a lot to do more with what the, what's going on with the dollar than anything, okay? Um, dollar yen. Uh, dollar yen is a little bit tricky, right? Because it's kind of weird. We're seeing like Euro USD spike, AUD USD spike, NZD USD spike, and we're seeing the dollar index drop. So 
you know, naturally, if you know, you guys have been paying attention with correlations and you follow that. And again, if it's over your head, that's fine. It's something that is going to be detailed and explained in the course. Um, by the way, guys, I would love to show you guys a preview, but, um, the keynote is absolutely crazy. I literally like, I'll pull it up, right? I don't even know if you guys can see this, but there's 73 slides and each slide is dedicated to their own video. So I think I'm tired now. Oh, whew, I'm going to be getting through it, but I promise you guys, all of the content is primo, like no fluff, no BS. You guys know how I am. I get straight to the point, keep it raw with you guys. So, um, anyways, with dollar yen, um, I would be expecting some downside on dollar yen. However, I'm not interested in trading this pair right now. And, um, I, it's just been really, really, uh, whipsaw. -y. If you guys don't know what the word whipsaw means, it means to go up and go down kind of like a seesaw, right? goes back and forth. So, um, J dog is content still for early release sale. Um, there is no, well, I mean, I, I don't know what, what type of promotion I'm going to do with that, but I mean, Jay, if you are a lifetime member, it is, it's all for free. It's all for free. Don't worry about paying my man. This course is for free for you guys. Don't worry. I'm not one of those guys. That's just going to be like, Oh, you guys are all lifetime members. Cool. All right. And here's, you know, this for this course. No guys, it's, it's all free for you guys. All right. I'm not here to, I'm here to give you guys value not to make money off of you. I mean, you know, obviously it's good to have business, whatever you guys are not saying. Um, dollar yen expecting more downside on this pair, but again, it's consolidating right now. I just kind of nasty with the, with the price action. So we'll just kind of stay away, away from this right now. I'm actually going to uncheck it cause I'm not interested. AUD USD, NZD USD, both of these pairs, um, have broken out of their downtrends, right? I just mentioned we're waiting for a retest. My alert on NZD USD did get hit, right? I had an alert. Well, you can see it if I go to alerts, it's, it's already been hit. So it's, it's, that's why it's X'd out, but, um, or not X'd out, but it's yellow. We can see that we've broken this downtrend. So pretty simple at this point, guys, we're just looking for a retest of this zone or some, somewhere in this area and then looking to go higher. So, you know, we may not actually get another, I'm being just straight up with you guys and honest, we may not get the entry that we're looking for on these pairs this week because NFP may be the reason that these pairs drop a little bit. And that might be you know, the catalyst, the driver for price to move down um, and the dollar index to maybe slightly move up for us to get a good entry for moving into next week. Okay. Um, NZD JPY, NZD JPY or New Zealand dollar yen is making, you know, we've talked about this for a while, right? I, and in fact, we've actually even tried taking a, a, a trade on this pair, which didn't work out in the past because we did see one more manipulation of a drop, right? Originally we had a triple bottom and now we have a quadruple bottom at the bottom. Um, which is, I mean, that's a very valid thing. I mean, there's no limit to like how many bottoms can be made, right? I, I mean, maybe I'm making that a quadruple bottom. Who cares? It is a quadruple bottom, right? So, I mean, we, regardless, we understand price action. We understand that there's a very strong presence of sellers at that bottom where the quadruple bottom is being made. So we understand that sellers are, you know, definitely not letting price pass that area, at least right now. So for the, and almost like a little, like, uh, double, double little whammy or W formation, a little teacup. Oh, I think that's what it was. I think we had seen this teacup in the past on NZD JPY and we tried taking a buy somewhere up in this area, but I guess it wasn't ready, right? This, this structure ended up becoming a lot more complex. And I think now we're going to end up getting that buy to the upside. Okay. So let's see how things go with this, but I will keep it listed because if I do see a trade, I will call it uh, pound Swiss franc. Uh, I'll just quickly look at this. I don't think I'm interested in trading this pair. No, but wow. It did go, it go, went back up. You guys remember we, we banked 270. 270 pips on this trade, right? We took a buy somewhere in this area. We caught this whole move all the way up here. We ended up closing our trade like right up in this area. Um, and then price came back down, right? Our long-term move for this pair is uh, still upside, right? We measured, we did something like this coming all the way back up here. So we'll look for that. Um, maybe if I see something, I will, you know, maybe breaks above this and we see a little bit of consolidation. Maybe we'll see a liquidity grab below here and then maybe look for an entry higher. Um, USD CAD, not interested in trading right now. Very kind of USD CAD is kind of like dollar yen right now, right? Like dollar CAD and dollar yen are very similar. They're both just kind of, kind of finessing people moving a little funky, not really interested. There's much cleaner price action on other pairs. Uh, Euro AUD. I'm going to go ahead and actually mark Euro AUD. Oh, what was that? Did you guys see that? different colors and stuff okay we're gonna have to play around with that a little bit that's cool must be a new update um another reason why i like trading view over metatrader force because they always have all these constant new little updates and things like that they never they didn't have these flags before this is new and now they're adding colors like a, i don't know I, I get jazzed up about those little things anything that makes my life as a trader easier and just like boom 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 don't have to think as much that's what i like right 
Um, Euro AUD. So just to kind of recap this trade, perfect entry beginning of this week, guys. Just like, I mean, we, can't, we couldn't have asked for a better trade, right? Super solid entry. Very, very, very minimal drawdown. It's just super strong downtrend we've been in. Um, obviously, we didn't catch this whole move down to the bottom. Hindsight is 2020. I'm really going to work on that too, guys, with my, you know, with, my, with my mindset of holding trades longer. You know, I have a tendency sometimes to close trades a little early. Other times, you know, we trade just run and hit our take profit just fine. But, um, you know, at the, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's just something that every, you know, every trader has their, their demons, I guess you could say, quote unquote, I wouldn't say it's a demon, but it's, uh, you know, it has their things that they can work on, you know? So that's me personally, as a trader, that's something that I can work on and I will, you know, continue working on that with you guys. And as you know, I've only been in the markets for five years going on five years, but in trading full time for three years, but you know, I definitely have not had as much skin in the game as somebody that's been in the markets for like 10, 20 years, you know? So I'm still very much learning guys. I mean, you know, learning to an extent, right? I mean, I understand the markets and stuff like that. I don't want you guys to think I'm a complete rookie in this. I mean, I'm sure you guys know I'm not, but you know what I'm saying, right? I'm still always be a student of the game. So um, a lot more downside expected on this pair. That weekly must look huge on this pair. Oof. Ooh, wow. Yeah, I mean, look at, and look at that, guys. Just so you know, you just you saw that trend line, right? Just nice, strong, strong downtrend being broken right now. I mean, we technically still haven't really broken the super downtrend, right? If we kind of put all this in here for a moment and let's kind of just take this line and draw another one, right? Oh, we're at it right now. Interesting. Okay. So keep that in mind guys. Okay. Uh, I'm going to actually remove that, clean it up a little bit. I'm also going to remove a couple things in here. Let's, let's do this guys. Let's hold on. Let's remove that let's remove that for now and you know we'll, we'll keep, keep we'll keep these trend lines they may they may become relevant if you see a retracement okay but you know i think a bounce off of this line this trend line is probably expected at this point but we're looking for a bounce and then a break right a bounce and then a break Okay, something like that. But Australian dollar, just write this down in your trading journal if you have some sort of like short-term trading journal or even if you, I mean, one of the best things too with, with these webinars, guys, I would highly recommend that you guys do is get a whiteboard, okay? It doesn't have to be some giant, giant whiteboard that you have. It can even be, you know, they have those tiny little small whiteboards that you can just like write on and throw in the drawer or whatever, you know? Get, you know, in, at your desk or wherever you trade, you know, have an area for your trading stuff and get this whiteboard there. And then, you know, boom, you have something. Now, Downside with whiteboards is it can accidentally get erased. So, um, I mean, me personally, I'm so OCD and ADD. It's like, I hate to have like a bunch of notes and all this stuff. I like to like keep things pretty clean. So I would probably prefer a whiteboard, but maybe some of you guys want to get just like a little notebook or something and write, you know, one page for each day. And then, you know, you have this giant notebook that's filled up and you can look back at it in the future and you have these memories. I have, I have that with a couple notebooks, actually a couple calendars, like literally yearly calendars that bring back good memories. But, um, yeah, expecting more downside on your AUD. So it's definitely marked. Um, I don't think it's too late. I mean, because guys, I, I'm expecting something big on this, like, like something like that, okay? Something just to give you guys an idea, okay? So just like Euro USD, I'm expecting some big moves to the upside right now. AUD, I'm expecting some big moves to the upside right now. You know, so it would just only make sense to expect those same types of moves with a pair that has a negative correlation with other pairs that we're looking for upside on, right? <sighs> wow. I can't believe I have so much energy after not sleeping. I think literally the past three days, I've gotten a combined total of six hours of sleep. So I don't know how I'm doing it, but I'm doing it. Euro NZD, same thing. We probably should see some more downside on this pair as well because it has a positive correlation to Euro AUD, Euro JPY, Euro Yen, not interested in trading Euro GBP. I will say Euro GBP, guys, watch Euro GBP. I'm actually going to go ahead and mark this up. Euro pound. Okay. Euro pound has been, is, is been making like some pretty complex structure, right? We take this on like the larger time frame. We were in a large uptrend for a while, started a downtrend, got a little bit of a head and shoulders in this area, never broke the neckline of the head and shoulders, um, continued to move up higher, broke those yearly highs. Uh, kind of got rejected, uh, not kind of, did get rejected in that area. And literally since, let's like take this, what day is that? That is September of last year. So literally a year and two months, September, October, November. Yeah. So what? That's 14 months 
14 months this pair has been in consolidation moving sideways, okay? So I think we could see some downside on this pair at this point, all right? We have a pretty strong like consolidation, right? We have a very strong level of supply in this area, right? Also, if you hear me use the word supply, you hear me use the word demand, you don't know what supply and demand is, it's covered in the course, all right? Um, Euro GBP, so this support, if this breaks, okay, we're, we're, we're tanking, all right? We are tanking, and then we'll look for a long-term, definitely a nice long-term swing trade on this pair. Um, what I would probably do, I mean, there, there's a couple different ways to go at it, right? The, the most basic method, the most simple method is fib out that giant swing and then, you know, most likely go for the next, the next major level, which is going to be right here, right? Which we have this liquidity right in this area. So it makes a lot of sense. Lots of confluence with the 38.2%. So, right, like I said, if you have that trading journal, if you have that, the, the notes, um, look at Euro GBP, okay? Um, and then CAD yen. You know, CAD yen has just been finessing us, guys. You know, uh, it's just not really doing what we want. Still consolidating sideways. You know, I, I mentioned a few weeks back, oops, four hour, that we were looking for some some downside. We, I mean, to an extent, we got some of the downside we were looking for. It definitely didn't go down to our target yet. I mean, it's really stalling. And you know what? I'm going to make the judgment call right now, guys, that that is just some really disgusting price action. I'm actually going to remove it from our watch list. I'm not interested really in trading CAD yen right now. So we'll kind of just hang on the sidelines with that. Um, anyways, that's that, guys. Okay, so we've got gold, Euro USD, AUD USD, NZD USD, um, New Zealand dollar, yen, Euro, Aussie dollar, and Euro pound. All that, that's two, four, six, seven setups right there that we have looking for us guys okay so biggest thing i always say at the end of the day guys i know you a lot of you guys in here are committed to positive traders and i know you guys are are, are you know this is probably a, the only group you guys follow for many of you guys but seriously i can't tell you guys at the end of the day i did a facebook live on it at midnight last night because it just like i had so much feelings about this i just needed to get it off my chest that like Follow people that have what you want, guys. I'm not going to get into a long, drawn-out rant right now. I'm just going to just say that. Like, follow who you guys want. You know, there, there's so many people on social media that are selling Forex and don't even have, like, the credibility or the, 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 the lifestyle to prove it, you know? And, and there's so many red flags. I'm not going to get into all of them right now. There's so many red flags that, you know, you can, you can go and see that um, to how to spot a fake trader. You know, I might actually make that as another lesson, like how to spot a fake trader. Maybe that'll be our 74th. I'll fit it somewhere in there, uh, you know, red, red flags of trading or something like that. So, um, you know, there, there's so many people out there that are selling the pipe, selling the dream with Forex and in Forex is a vehicle that you can make six, seven figures and you can become very wealthy. I'm saying can C A N you can, yes, I'm shaking my head. You can make a lot of money in Forex, but the method in the way that a lot of these people online are teaching you to, to build that wealth with Forex is the completely wrong way guys. And I, I hate seeing people like lose, their money like losing their hard-earned money with forex so you know follow the people that have the lifestyle the guys you guys have literally seen me travel the world for over a year now I, I, I went to australia for six months in october october 25th of last year now we're in november of this year and i literally went to my apartment for three days guys and that for those three days was just a week or a couple days before i came out here guys i have not officially been home settled down in my apartment in over a year okay so um, it's, it's pretty crazy, um, to see what I've been able to do with Forex and to be able to, you know, to, to see how far I've come. And now I'm literally in Thailand guys, like beautiful Thailand. Like you guys want to see this real quick. I, I know I showed you guys yesterday, but I'll show you guys again real quick. Like this, this is my view. This is what I get to wake up to every morning for the next couple months on here. So beautiful, gorgeous city of Chiang Mai. There's so many digital entrepreneur, digital nomads and entrepreneurs out here. It's super crazy, super awesome. The energy is great out here. Getting connect with people, getting to connect with people out here, is great, and it's all because of forex, guys. Um, so you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I really wouldn't have my life any other way right now. It's life, life is good. So um, I want to get all of you guys on this level too. You know, I'm not telling you, I'm not saying this stuff to brag to you guys. I'm saying this stuff to hopefully inspire and motivate you guys to, you know, 
really put in the work, you know, be real with yourself. You know, if you've been struggling, if you've like maybe not put in the work, maybe you've kind of lied to yourself the past year, however long you've been in Forex and you kind of know what you need to do, but you haven't done it, do it guys, you know, just, just do it. Just pick up, pick up a couple Forex books, you know, I obviously I have my, my course coming out. So, you know, maybe you can have the excuse of waiting until my course to come out. But even in the meantime, still no excuses, guys, you know, go through whatever resources you have. There's, even though I'm releasing new trainings right now, there's still seven hours of recorded trainings on the website. There's still a ton of stuff that you guys can go through to soak up this knowledge, right? So, um, yeah, guys, I mean, it's really up to you. Just ask yourself where you want to be in the next 10 years. Where do you want to be in 20 years? Do you want to, in, in 10 years from now, 20 years from now, however many, many years from now, do you want to like look back and say, man, I really wish I would have taken that seriously. Or would you rather take it seriously now and be able to change your life? And a lot of you guys have families, a lot of you guys have kids, a lot of you guys have, you know, re a, a lot bigger reasons why than just to make money and, and have a dope lifestyle, right? You have, you want to, you want to set up a uh, success for your kids. So take it seriously now, guys. All right. So I appreciate each and every single one of you guys, most likely because this is so dope. I'm probably going to share this um, for free. Uh, I know you guys like having your, your value to yourself, but you know, I like to give away as much value as I can. And you know, one, one daily webinar never killed it, never hurt anybody. So you probably will see me share this um, on social media for free today. Cause I feel like, you know, we were just vibing really hard and, and getting things done today. So I appreciate you guys. I'll see you guys on the weekly outlook on Monday or on Sunday. Uh, other than that, take care guys. Still 8 PM Eastern time, normal time. That's like 6 AM or 7 AM for me, but I don't care. I'm getting up and doing it. We're staying consistent with it. We're getting it done. All right. So 8 PM Eastern on Sunday for the next weekly outlook. If you have any questions, you guys need any help. Make sure you're also in the Telegram channel now for the signals because I'm no longer giving out the signals inside of Slack because of the way my business model is changing. So if you need help with that, um, hit me up. But take care, guys. Have a safe weekend, safe, relaxing weekend. Spend some time with your loved ones and have a great weekend, guys.